car begins now to accelerate. Scott Brayton, the pole sitter, leads the front row around. Good alignment on the front row. Pace car is off the track now. They're a bit straggled beyond the front row. Brayton begins to accelerate. There's the green flag. And the 79th running of the Indy 500 is underway. As Scott Goodyear sweeps across the outside and into the lead, Ari Leonide ducks into second place. And we've got a car. front into one car cut away the rest of the field slows all right power turn two we can see debris the main bad thing debris broken race cars laying all over this race car track clear down into turn two all the way from turn one clear down here and fox sitting right in front of us there the biggest thing the guy's going to have to worry about when they come back around cutting their tires and all the carbon fiber laying around so we've seen three cars. Eddie Cheever is out of his, Stan Fox is his, and it looks like Lynn St. James, the third car. She is still in her car. A.J. Foyt down in the pit area, no longer in two-way communications with his driver, Eddie Cheever. But the yellow flag out right here on the start. And there is DeFerrin trying to drive a broken car back to the pit area. Paul, the track is blocked so bad down here, they're going to have to put the cars down on the pit apron to get them through in my area. Let's go to the pits, Gary. And a quick radio report from Paul Tracy. Paul, he said, Tracy told his crew, he barely missed that accident as it happened. He said it's the luckiest thing that's happened to this team this season. Well, a first lap incident is one of the great fears. Here it is as the leader, Scott Goodyear, came off of two. Now watch way up in the corner. Suddenly, two cars get together, and that was Cheever and Fox. The field darts to the inside, many using the warm-up lanes, which were only built here a few years ago, but probably saved many drivers here today. Stan Fox looks like he got into the wall incredibly hard. We're concerned about him, very concerned. We'll keep an eye, and we won't report anything until we actually have it confirmed. You can see as we look at this second replay, how many tires and suspension pieces began to come off the cars right away and affect cars that really were not part of the original accident at all. Lynn St. James was one of those who was tagged by a flying debris. Here's a third one from the car of Bobby Rahal, who of course started fairly far back in the pack. Watch to the right of the screen, and there's where the debris is already bouncing around. Remember, carbon fiber is dark, gray in color. It's very hard to see against the track, particularly on a day like this, so it's easy to pick up a flat. It would look from my vantage point down here in turn two, Sam and Paul, that something must have broken on the, on the Fox car because it immediately made a right-hand turn. That's not normal. Let's go to Jerry Punch. A.J. Foyt talking to his other driver here, Scott Sharp, momentarily. A.J., a tough break at the beginning. What happened? Well, I really don't know. I have not talked to Eddie, and, uh, you know, this is racing. I've been that way before myself here. But uh, right now I'm in contact with Scott trying to figure out if we need to pit or not. Okay, that's Scott Sharp, his other driver. Let's check in with Jack Aroot. Well, Jerry, that early caution was a break for Robbie Gordon and his team because not only did he have a radio problem, but the major reason why they stayed on pit road as long as they did, not to get radio communication, but added to it and exacerbating the situation, a throttle that kept sticking. And Paul Page, you know that's the last thing you want in Indianapolis is a throttle sticking wide open. Gordon's had that problem before. Yeah, I've had the problem at Miami. For one, had radio problems at Phoenix, but yet he won that race. So now the yellow is out the first time. One lap is complete. We're under a caution at Indianapolis owing to this accident. When we come back, we'll update it. 